It's officially the exam season for GCSE and A-level students. So here's exactly what to do the night before an exam to get those top grades. Step one is to sleep right. The one thing I'm glad I've never done, even if I'm extremely underprepared for a test, is to stay up late that night and study for it. I don't understand why a lot of people do this. From my experience, I consider every hour of studying done after around 8 p.m. as a 30 minute studying session. Because after 8 p.m., your brain is tired and exhausted. It can't digest and understand information like it would in the morning. So now imagine going from 8 p.m. until 3 a.m. studying, thinking you've gotten a solid couple of hours of studying in. Not only have you been extremely inefficient in your studying, because your brain is just too tired to understand and digest the information, you've also completely messed with your sleep quality. The only outcome is that the next day on that important test, you can't recall information as you usually would because your brain is just not rested. And guess what? You're not going to perform that well. But let's say you actually pulled it off and the all-nighter helped. What about the rest of the day? You'll come home and you'll be too tired. So now you've made studying for your next exam even more difficult. And it's a whole cycle, which is why we need to think in the long term. Now, I've made a video dedicated specifically to how to optimize your sleep to get all nines or all A stars, which you can watch right here. But to keep it short, don't drink any caffeine after 3 p.m. Even if you fall asleep, it will mess with your sleep quality. Don't have any heavy meals after 7 p.m. And trust me, this will affect your sleep quality way more than you think. And of course, try to get at least seven hours of sleep in. Try to be in bed as early as possible as well. I personally try to be in bed around 10 p.m. Even if my exam is not in the morning. Even if your body is used to it, it still doesn't like to go to sleep after midnight every day. Your body likes to sleep at around 9 or 10 p.m. If you want to hear it from an expert, check out the book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. I've linked it in the description and it's a game changer. Now, step two is to avoid cramming by any means possible. The basic foundation of any successful studying plan or recalling information in general is active recall and space repetition. That's what gets you the top grades. Cramming on the other hand is the complete opposite of both of those principles. Not only does it stress you out because of the rush and the lack of time you spend on each subject, it's also just not that effective. I love this analogy from the first chancers. If an athlete has an important match the next day, let's say the World Cup final, the day before, when he's training, is he gonna go all out or is he gonna take it easy? Of course, he's not gonna push his body to complete exhaustion. He's gonna take it easy so that he's sharp for the next day. Likewise, if you're cramming, all you're doing is exhausting your brain with new information that it doesn't even have time to digest and understand. And because cramming is always associated with staying up late and all-nighters, your brain is gonna be completely destroyed the next day because you haven't given it enough time to rest and recover from all of the information you've assaulted it with. How do you then expect it to recall all of that information? If you stick around to the end, I'll share how I revised the night before an exam. Step three is visualization. Now I can't lie, I don't really believe in manifesting stuff from the universe and all of that, but there's no doubt that visualization works. Let me tell you about a study that the University of Chicago carried out. They selected a group of random students and then just told them to shoot free throws. They recorded the average success rate and then split the group into three different groups. The first group was told not to touch a basketball for 30 days, so they had no training. The second group was told to practice free throws for 30 minutes a day for 30 days. And then the final group was told to spend 30 minutes a day in the gym, closing their eyes and visualizing themselves doing free throws. They were all brought in again and told to shoot free throws. What was the outcome? Well, the first group that didn't practice at all, as you can imagine, had no improvement. The second group who practiced free throws, as expected, had a 24% improvement. And now the final group, which mind you, they didn't touch a basketball for 30 days. All they did was close their eyes and visualize themselves scoring the free throws they had an improvement rate of 23%. They got 23% better from just imagining themselves scoring the free throws. Imagine you getting 23% more marks in a test from just visualizing. That's a jump of at least two or three grades. The difference between a six and a nine or a B and an A star. That's why the day before an exam or even the morning of the exam, I like to spend a couple of minutes with my eyes closed just imagining myself smashing that paper. I imagine myself opening up the paper as soon as the invigilator tells us to and just answering all of the questions flawlessly. The more detail you add, the better. Let's say I know that my physics paper will have a six marker and an MCQ section. I'll imagine each section and each question and I'll imagine myself perfecting it. If you also want to take it a step further, I sometimes like to visualize myself on results day, opening up my results and being happy and satisfied with it. Now, I don't really know why this works, but my theory is that we're limited by our mindsets more than anything else. And visualization, it helps us remove that limit. And once we remove that limit, we can score much, much higher. Now, step four is the actual revision. How should you be revising for an exam the night before? The type of revision I like to do the night before my exam is what I call ironing out any creases in my knowledge. I look back at the syllabus or any past papers I've done and I look at which topics I've found hard. I then go through any notes or flashcards I've made for that topic and top up my understanding of that content. And if I wanna go a step further, I'll do some practice questions for that topic, but nothing heavy. Remember the analogy from before, the athlete the night before, he's just gonna do some light practice. Maybe he'll jog a bit, he'll just do some light drills. He's not gonna do anything heavy. Likewise, I'll just keep my brain warm and stimulate those parts that need to be worked on. Almost telling my brain to focus on that information so that when I go to sleep, it can work on building those links that will help me recall that information the next day in the exam. 